Walk Snail Avatar has been around for a while now and they have just released a new beta firmware version 29.33.12 and you can get that from their Discord server. And it adds on-screen display playback, meaning that when you play back the DVR in the goggles, you have the option to view the beta flight and Walk Snail on-screen display. Unfortunately, it still doesn't hard code the on-screen display onto the DVR video file itself. And whether that is possible or not is yet to be seen. But what you can do is record your flight and then go back home and use an HDMI capture device like this Digit Now one and record your flight with the on-screen display overlay after the fact if you wish to do so. It's also good as well if you've lost your model and there's something on the on-screen display that you need to retrieve it. Now, I'm not actually going to use the method of HDMI input today because my capture device alters the color profile compared to the original DVR file created by the goggles. So instead, I'm going to record some flights and then replace the file with a blank video and key the on-screen display over the top of the original DVR using a video editor. You can then watch the video in 4K on YouTube and judge for yourself how the system is coming along compared to DJI. The way the on-screen display playback works is that it now creates a third OSD file on the SD card of your goggles. And there's a potential there for someone to create an interface so that those files can be merged together and you don't have to get your HDMI cable out, but that's not in place at the making of this video. Other things they have changed are the camera settings now saved to each individual VTX, so you don't have to change it every time you swap models. And they say that they have optimized the RF low level performance, and now you get a red box around the entire screen when the RF signal gets really low. So I'll be checking that out, but you'll have to watch the end of the video when that happens. Things that don't still work or seem to make a huge impact is having the power levels above 700 milliwatt and 1080p mode. Audience mode still doesn't work either. Now Walksnail never sent me their upgraded patch antennas, so I'm going to be using the stock V1 DJI antennas, which seem to work better than the stock Walksnail ones, and I'll be using the same antennas on the DJI V1 goggles. For the resolution, I'm going to run them in 720p and the frame rate as standard and the bit rate also as standard because I'm first going to do a flight with a DJI Cadex Vista as a comparison. I'm going to fly DJI in HQ mode, which is the equivalent to standard mode with Walk Snail at 60 FPS rather than 120 FPS with DJI and 100 FPS with Walk Snail. The reason for that is I favor quality over latency and I find no issues with latency at 60 FPS with either systems. I'm gonna run DJI at 50 megabit, which I usually don't do because I fly with other people and that opens more channels up. But I want to see what the best DJI can offer against the best walk snail can offer. And I'm also gonna try 50 megabits on the walk snail system. Both power outputs will be 700 milliwatts because I don't use more than that with DJI anyways. And there's no benefit going above 700 milliwatts with walk snail. So I thought 700 milliwatts on both would keep it fair. Alrighty, how is walk snail doing? Well, I thought I'd start off by doing a flight with a DJI model. So this is an iFlight model and I've put it in the 16 by nine view and it's a original Cadex Vista with the DJI camera. Got it in 50 megabit mode. And this is the benchmark really. 
So I've upgraded Walk Snail to the latest firmware, which is always a moving target. Um, this is the first iteration of the version 29 firmware for Walk Snail. And this is now no longer the current version for the Vista because they've added support for the goggles too but the reason I'm comparing or want to compare walk snail against the DJI V1 system is because I think um, from a flight experience the things that you want to see you don't get that with the O3 the dynamic range just isn't there so, you know, if I'm looking into the sun now, uh, yeah, it, it takes a minus two degree day to get sun in the UK. But this is what I loved about it. And it's what I don't particularly like about the O3 is that, you know, the, the dynamic range just isn't there. And yeah, sure, it, it's great that you've got almost like a uh, GoPro stabilized footage with the O3. But I think things are lost, such as being able to see things in the shadows when the sun is against you. Now, I really wanted to be able to do a penetration test. Can't really do that on uh, this field because it's so small. Uh, but my bigger flying field, they've put sheep in it and if anything goes down uh, with DJI or walk snail in terms of video loss or fail safe, then it's gonna be a, a mucky repair job. So we're at 700 milliwatts here. I'm gonna go really slowly because I'm out of line of sight now with DJI, making sure that there's no people around and it makes it around there fine. I did get a signal warning there for a brief second, but didn't really notice any jitters or anything like that. And I've gone 16 by nine on the camera as well, because there isn't a four by three camera for walks. Now there's a four by three mode, but all it does is cut the edges off. Um, you don't get that full vertical field of view. So uh, I thought it would be fair to uh, compare the two in, in 16 by nine. And also just look at the compression as well. You know, when we get low to the grass in uh, 50 megabit mode on DJI, it's, it's not too bad, but it's still there. And uh, what people are liking about walk snail is the fact that it's somewhere in the middle, you know, you you retain more of that sharpness. So on the same day, let's come in for a landing and compare it with the latest version of the walk snail firmware, which as I say is uh, V29 dot something something. It, it's the first iteration of 29, uh, which will probably be out of date by the time this video has uh, come out, but let's just see the difference on the same day. Alrighty, so walk snail. Man, the batteries are not lasting long today. So I'm in 720p resolution here at 25 megabit. because that supposedly is the best option everyone says. Uh, I mean, straight away, the picture is really clear, but what I am noticing is, I don't know if this is gonna come out on the DVR, but I'm noticing that smushiness on the grass. So that compression there sort of coming in and out 
Uh, let's check out the dynamic range into the sun. Yeah, it's definitely more of a softer image there. The image looks great. And let's just come into the sun and into the shadows. And man, it's, yeah, it's difficult to pick between the two there. Uh, one thing I did notice is that the uh, goggles uh, recording of the uh, battery voltage is out. This is where I'm going to get scared here. So 700 milliwatts. I'm going to take it slow, make sure we haven't got any people. Battery is depleting quickly. Uh, no stutters, but yeah, it's getting very smushy there. But, uh, yeah, viable option. I can't even go up on the throttle. These batteries are toast, and the freezing temperatures is not helping that at all. It's that a two-minute flight time, and uh, already at 22... Uh, Volts. Now I'm trying to record the OSD via uh, HDMI out. Um, the voltage scaling on the model is slightly wrong as well, which uh, doesn't help. So we can see 21.5 on the on-screen display there and 21.8, which is where we should be landing there on the direct voltage. But that's 16.5 volts for the goggles. Um, yeah, that, that's just wrong. It's reporting higher than it should be. But uh, yeah, that's interesting. That is because, you know, using a 25 megabit against the 50 megabit of DJI, uh, it does seem to, in my scenario with this firmware, it's a beta firmware, remember, uh, it does seem that we are getting more of that uh, smushiness in the grass there with the walk snail uh, version 29 of the firmware. Let's go in for a landing. Okay, so now I'm in 720p mode with the uh, bit rate as high. And actually, there is still some of that compression there in the grass, but it's actually not as bad. No stutters or anything like that. Oh, that might have been a bit of a stutter. Hard to tell. The other thing, of course, you get with walk snail as well is that you tend to find that, wow, that was an amazing flight, and you put it on the computer, and it's like, oh, it doesn't quite look as good. And, and that's down to the OLED panels, I'm pretty sure. Because what you've got with the DJI uh, V1 and v2 goggles is lcd panels and so when you're watching that back on a computer which is probably an lcd panel as well uh, there's not many people as far as i know running uh, oled panels for their computers so with that goggle you kind of get the same experience through the goggle as you do looking at the dvr whereas when you look at anything through an oled panel whether it's dvr playback or anything like that then it's gonna look better. All right, now for the scary bit. So we've gone up to in uh, 50 megabit mode. Let's see what happens when we go around here. We're out of line of sight. Oh, the screen's flashing red. Yeah, it's getting very smushy, but it made it round. Not quite on par with DJI, but what I am impressed with is the dynamic range. Uh, but yeah, we've still got that compression. 
but it, it's weird. It kind of like just disappears. So it's like when I'm getting low down. So when I'm low down here to the ground, I think I was a slight stutter again. Low down to the ground, yeah, you see the grass smushy, but then I sort of uh, get higher up and it's smushy there. And I kind of move forward and that whole patch just comes into, uh, through the goggles at least, just uh, appears. But you know what, if, if we didn't have the DJI V1, everyone would be absolutely raving about this, wouldn't they? And uh, yeah, when I say, ask somebody, you know, or they, they ask me, or they've been flying walk snail, and I say, what, what do you think, you know, is it, is it on par with DJI now? Has it surpassed DJI? Uh, they usually use the word virtually. It's virtually there. And what I'm after is an actually, it's an actually there. It's surpassed. And uh, yeah, so for me, it needs to be an actually, but and I, I do think that they will get there. This is flyable, you know, it's nice. Um, I don't know if it's whether I've just not got my um, prescription quite right on the dials, but those uh, trees back there, they don't quite look as sharp as the DJI. But uh, you can judge for yourself for that when I upload this. So there you go, that is my uh, walk snail update. They're doing all right, aren't they? But are they there yet? I think you can say vir they're virtually there, but are they actually there? Not quite. But, you know, they're more community focused. You know, we have a say in the community, you know, what features we want and where improvements are. This uh, beta firmware that I'm testing is available for everybody, not just, you know, selected secret testers. Um, you know, it's certainly much more closer to the HD Zero model than the DJI for sure. And when it comes to the experience of dynamic range and stuff like that, forget the, the onboard recording and you know, image stabilization and all, all of that business. The dynamic range of this uh, kills the O3 for now, which uh, I don't understand because the O3's got a bigger sensor, but uh, there you go. So there you go, that's my video on where Walk Snail is at. Well, maybe at, we'll have to see if uh, any other firmwares uh, come out by the time I've managed to put this video together, but uh, yeah, actually, uh, first time I've flown for a while. My fingers are freezing. I can barely feel them. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. And as always, please continue to subscribe. Cheers.